Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are The Last Mile Profits. This is the last word on The Last Mile. Marek, there was a recent article in the Australian media talking about some of the big e-commerce retailers in Australia and what they want to achieve in fulfilment and delivery. And it sounded a bit like in this article that they were talking more about reaching a multi-carrier kind of arrangement for the last mile. I know I've heard you tell a story previously about what happened in the UK with Royal Mail, one of its very big customers, who went beyond having a multi-carrier agreement, just said, right, we're going to do it ourselves. It appears to me that there is growing pressure on the posts, various postal operators around the world, to increase or improve their e-commerce delivery offering. But on the flip side of this is also that the e-commerce retailers need to improve their own e-commerce delivery options in order to compete with the the behemoths. Matic, what do you, what do you reckon about this? Like it or hate it, e-commerce is growing and e-commerce B2C parcels are growing exponentially. And COVID has only made this thing even more important and accelerated that growth. At the same time, traditional mail business, and in particular letters, have been in decline. I think nobody questions that it's not if, but when they finally cease to, to exist because you're going to have electronic communications. The writing's on the wall. The postal operators either need to embrace the change and embrace the new last mile and become competent actually even more than that, not just competent, but but strong players in this space, or they'll fall by the wayside, or you and I and whoever else, the taxpayer, is going to subsidise them for a long, long time. Well, that is a potential reality because the, the, the trajectory at the moment for letters is downwards, but nobody knows what that final point will be, whether the volumes will level off and they'll remain at the current level or they'll level off in five years' time. But the, the current thing thinking is letter volumes can't decline forever. There will, become, there will be a point where it's just sort of they remain at a certain level and posts have these universal service obligations imposed upon them. So they'll be obliged to deliver the letters one way or another, whether it's one day a week, five days a week, alternate days, whatever it is. But that... It, any of those options are really just cost reduction options. They're not focused on growth and having a sustainable service or even being part of a country's plans for e-commerce when you consider e-commerce as what some people are saying now, a critical infrastructure. Now, I'm not making a case one way or another on that, Marek, but let's just say a government says, yes, e-commerce is a critical infrastructure. It might not mandate the existence of e-commerce companies, but it might mandate a certain standard of parcel delivery. And who will be the candidate? to deliver the minimum standard for parcel delivery. Well, Marek, we all know who that will be. most likely be. It'll most likely be the posts. But that basic level, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of extrapolating a little bit here, Marek. I know this is usually, you, know, you do a lot of the talking on these things, but I'm going to extrapolate, no, extrapolating, imagining, forecasting a little bit what might happen, imagining. But in this hypothetical situation, the customer will not choose the carrier of last resort. The same as the customer doesn't choose the carrier of last resort now. Marek. And Ian, And that's the key thing. As long as the post is the carrier of last resort or last choice, as it were, people won't select it. So so basically, what's the message? The message is, number one, posts need to be more customer centric. They need to be actually the carrier, ideally a first choice, but if not first choice, then one of the carriers of first choice. So that's that's point one. Point two, I'm going to actually put my head on the block here and say that I believe that by 2040, absolute worst case 2050, there will be no more printed mail. And I'll tell you why. It's not just an issue of it being less in demand. There are ecological issues. Why cut down trees when you can do the same thing electronically, where tax offices and, and, and utilities accept electronic communications. So my head is on the block here, 2040, just to protect myself, worst case 2050, no more mail, not a single letter. I hope for I've retired by then, Mark. So... <laughs> But coming coming back in to, 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 to the, the serious point, this is what it's all about, isn't it? How can a post avoid being the carrier of last resort? What can they do? And a lot of people say, oh, it's not possible because it's such a big organization. So many legacy issues, unionization. I don't agree with that. I think it's it's a question of the vision of the management, the ability to get the unions and staff on board and to push together to create the new we talk about the new last mile. Let's call it the new post office. And it's a it's it's about vision and getting the guys and girls on board. I also think that major stakeholders in postal organisations, like the unions, 
if if you go if if management goes to the union and says look we want to be have a great last mile delivery experience the union's not going to tell them where to go right the union will want to sit down and talk about this and especially when the long term future of employees are at stake so i do think that posts can do it and also when when i i've heard this argument as well the one that you just mentioned about the posts being too big a ship to turn around quickly and it is sometimes true that posts are big ships that take a while to turn and it might seem that you're trying to turn an oil tanker and there are always little speed boats out there and your oil tanker is still turning around slowly slowly but it is possible to make these sorts of changes roll out an enterprise wide wide solution or range of solutions that are customer centric. I don't think that any post should sit there and say it's too hard because that is even worse than legacy thinking. What are you saying, Mark? I completely agree. The, the, the complication is that in a normal commercial entity, you do have fewer stakeholders that have influence. You do need to get significant influence groups on board. So on one hand, you've got the politicians. And unfortunately, the challenge there is they tend to change every few, few years and can have a different view. So that's one thing the posts have. And so what needs to happen in my view is the politicians need to take a step back and say, look, we want this organization to be customer centric and we have to take a longer term view and perhaps agree that the management is going to be independent of political influence for a while. So that's one thing. Subject only to to, to basic service features and quality. The second thing I reckon, and this is, this is the, the other difficult one, is to really get the unions on board to to make them a partner who is able to participate and understand where we're going and the fact that short-term protection sometimes can mean long-term loss of jobs. So it, it has to be fair and open. And I have to say one thing, I don't know if I've shared this with you, but when I was restructuring a business in Poland that was in a really bad state, the guys I went to were the Swedish union. We, we were actually owned by the Swedish post office. And much to my surprise, it was the Swedish unions that saved a commercial business, a subsidiary in Poland. And when I was talking to these guys, to these senior union officials, they were really switched on. So it's not true. I think if you label union leaders as you know being out of touch with, with what's happening in the world, if you don't treat them as partners, then you'll have issues. Of course, it takes two to tango. So the, the, the union leaders also have to treat the management with respect, have, have a, an understanding of their challenges and issues. And I think if that can be achieved, then you get a virtuous circle. And I believe that the post then really does have a chance to, to succeed because it's got one really big advantage, its network. The network is a considerable advantage, and it's not just the network in terms of the delivery access, so being able to deliver to, if not every delivery point, but almost every delivery point. It's also got that post office network as well. And that post office network is a ready-made PUDO network that can be a real advantage for customer centricity, because this is what we're really talking about today, is making sure that the post can be customer centric, whether it's offering uh, full interactive delivery management, offering delivery options like in-home or maybe not even necessarily in-home, but to the doorstep, out-of-home delivery options, tracking your delivery, all those sorts of things that the customers now expect as a basic offering. So anyway, Marek, I'm starting to rant on. Do you want to make a final comment before we run out of time? Yeah, I, I, I would say that it is really doable. I'm just waiting to see a post that's able to really do this. There are some historic examples where, and they've tended to be pretty big ones, or you've got Deutsche Post who who have actually been pretty successful. They made some mistakes along the way when they had their, their bigger is better phase. Now I think that they're doing pretty well. La Post I think has been extremely successful. There's a few smaller posts that I think, particularly I'd choose Norway Post as being pr pretty entrepreneurial and forward sighted. So, you know, Let's see where this goes. I, I I really have my fingers crossed that some of the problem children like Royal Mail can get their act together, can get this consensus and move forward because it's important both for the public at large and for the taxpayer, to be honest. Mara Krasetsky, thanks for being part of The Last Mile Profits today. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everyone.